rolling leviathan, a behemoth on wheels, crawling through the quiet countryside that comprises New England. What is it? It's a 500,000 pound auto transformer, a high voltage electrical device with no moving parts, critical to America's power grid. And there's not just one. Northeast Utilities is buying several of these massive devices, which serve as an off-ramp from the regional power grid to the local distribution system that provides power to our homes and businesses. Built overseas and shipped by boat, the auto transformer's journey is then only halfway complete. It becomes time to mobilize resources as this titan of technology begins its quasi-stealth journey to its final destination inside an electrical substation somewhere in New England. See how this huge piece of equipment is transported, almost unnoticed, through quiet towns on rural roads at a top speed of only 15 miles per hour. This is Enuvations. Like highways, which provide an inter- and intrastate travel system, the electric transmission grid is also designed to carry high-volume, fast-moving energy across large expanses, branching off along streets and roads to deliver power to customers. The backbone of the New England transmission power grid carries current at 345,000 volts, a voltage much higher than most homes and businesses can handle. So, just as exit ramps periodically provide access to local roads and streets, substations, which are located at key points in the transmission grid, step the voltage down to 115 kilovolts for final delivery to homes and businesses. A main player in this step-down process is the auto transformer. In 2006, Northeast Utilities signed an agreement with Arriva T&D, a key international supplier of auto transformers to equip various NU substations located in Connecticut, Western Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Each transformer, weighing in excess of 500,000 pounds, arrives in the Port of New York via container ship from factories in Brazil, South Korea, or China. For the next leg of its journey, the auto transformer is transferred to a specially designed railroad car or barge. By the time it arrives in Connecticut, months of planning and preparation have already been completed. Northeast Utilities Transmission, working closely with the freight forwarder, hauling contractor, and state and local transportation officials, has meticulously mapped out the last route the giant transformer will take on its trip. The only item left to determine is the timing of the move. If the move is approved for daylight hours, it typically occurs between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Evening moves typically start at 9 p.m with the oversized vehicles required to be off the road before the morning rush hour starts. This makes moving the auto transformer relatively inconspicuous. And for a touch of added uncertainty, all moves are New England weather dependent. On this program, we're going to take a closer look at two of these auto transformer moves, one by truck to Manchester, Connecticut, and the other by train through the high cliffs and dense woods of New Hampshire. It's daybreak on Long Island Sound, and a tug arrives at the State Pier in New London, Connecticut, pushing a barge with an unusual cargo secured to its deck. This late summer cruise from the Port of New York was noticed only by a few recreational boaters and commercial fishermen. A six-story crane carefully lifts the auto transformer off the barge and swings it over the side to the dock. Stevedores prepare to load the unit onto a self-propelled hauler trailer that will carry the massive piece of equipment several hundred feet to a nearby rail car, where it will begin the next leg of its journey to its new home in a substation, dozens of miles from here. Following its short journey via train, the auto transformer is transferred to a 110-foot long flatbed truck. Designed to carry heavy loads through tough spaces, this hauler has 100 wheels. Most of these wheels have the ability to steer making tight turns on city streets possible. In the dead of night, this auto transformer is placed onto a flatbed truck and sets out for Manchester, Connecticut. In this crisp autumn chill, crews will need to be at their best to ensure that the convoy moves along successfully and efficiently with minimal disruption to the communities it passes through. On the evening of the move, a convoy of vehicles accompanies the auto transformer hauler. 
escorting the oversized load, the hauling contractor and Connecticut Light and Power, who are in constant close communication, carefully orchestrate every move. State and local police will escort the convoy and provide traffic control through busy intersections as utility bucket trucks raise low-hanging traffic lights and wires for safe passage underneath. The move crawls along at a pace of no more than 15 miles per hour, with diesel engines growling and transmissions shifting to accommodate pitch grades in an effort not to upset the delicate balance of the mighty transformer atop the flatbed truck. Passers-by marvel at the size of the giant transformer and line the street sides for a quick peek or photo opportunity. The weight of the auto transformer, more than 500,000 pounds, and actual dimensions of the unit make the selection of the delivery route more complex than a typical freight delivery. Not all vehicle bridges are capable of supporting the weight of a heavy hauler that weighs basically 200 times more than the average passenger car. As a result, this weight exceeds the capacity of some railroad bridges. Meanwhile, a few hundred miles north, another auto transformer is loaded onto a cargo train and heads north from Searsport, Maine to Montreal, Quebec, and then south to its final destination in Conway, New Hampshire. The train carrying this transformer, which is carried in two pieces, makes its way along the tracks at a steady pace. The journey through steep cliffs and mountainous regions of Crawford Notch, New Hampshire is not for the faint of heart. Past deep forests as a backdrop, the train crosses towns and passes communities while all the while straining against the massive bulk of the transformer. Small crowds of spectators perch on the rocks, lining the narrow rail right-of-way for a look at the unusual cargo being moved by the historic Conway Scenic Railway. The move enters its final four hours through the streets of the bucolic town under the cover of darkness not even heavy rains drench the efforts of anyone involved in the operation. Finally, the auto transformer is delivered to its new home in Public Service of New Hampshire's Saco Valley substation, where it begins serving the area for an expected 40 years, or possibly even longer. Back in Connecticut, the caravan slows to a stop near Manchester, a bridge that cannot handle the half a million pounds of the transformer lies in the direct route to the destination. Having planned for this contingency in advance, crew members and five-ton forklifts choreograph the assembly of a solid steel modular bridge, which evenly distributes the weight of the vehicle carrying the transformer. This jumper bridge is suspended inches above the existing road surface and includes ramps on each side to ensure a gradual ascent and descent to and from the road surface to resume the move. Crossing the bridge is tricky. The truck must not deviate or suddenly accelerate at any point while crossing. The hauler safely crosses. The jumper bridge is dismantled, packed up on trailers, and the crew rejoins the group using alternate routes and resumes their place in the procession. Since 2009, auto transformers have been delivered to Manchester, Watertown, Torrington, and Montville, Connecticut in addition to Conway, New Hampshire. It takes approximately one year to manufacture an auto transformer, from the date of its order to the day that it leaves the plant floor. The move from the manufacturing plant to its final destination in a substation takes generally two months to complete. The auto transformer, a critical component along the electrical transmission superhighway, and truly an innovation.